Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, and one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews and evil love and enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Ghost Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show is brought to you by our brand new sponsor. Picture this photo book for remembering is the key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at a wedding and even more so at yours. And who doesn't miss grandmother's meatballs, huh? Right? Well, the holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift that remembers and makes you laugh, cry at the same time? Whether a gift like grandma's recipes or just because those smiles and tears will melt your heart. Carol Karen Shaw at Picture List Photo Books at 646 798 0809. That's 646 798 0809. Or visit Picture This Photo Books.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show and get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books. Bring your memories back to life. The whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. And don't forget to um, check out the Mike Widener Show on over 30 podcast platforms, Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show at the end on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise at themikewidenershow.com. And uh, also on Mike Widener Show podcast on Amazon, T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, throw pillows, tote bags, and a lot more. Makes great Christmas gifts year-round. And also, you can also check out the um, Amazon.com, me and most in ZS store for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles, and also some great merchandise. Go to Amazon.com, check out the me and most in ZS store. And don't forget to um, also donate generously to the Mike Widener Show.com. Click on Donate. And also, um, also um, show your support on Anchor FM slash support and PayPal at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who's out of the Tampa Bay area, and he's a founder of Pulse Media, and he's also the parent, also parent company of Tampa Bay Pulse Radio. So as you can tell for our video listeners, he is very delighted to be wearing a Tampa Bay uh, Lightning Stanley Cup, and, um, and of course, um, just very excited about their latest win as well, too, trying for a three-peat, and uh, he's been featured in Indie Pulse Music, and um, also Indie Pulse Music Business, and uh, Pulse Media Magazine, and um, he's had years of experience um, creating radio programming, and shows, and stations, and a lot more, and uh, he also has a background to tell about as well too and how he got started and uh his mission as well and live ladies and gentlemen from the plus studios in beautiful downtown tampa florida home of the lightning and of course he's the big tampa lightning fan ladies and gentlemen we have the very multi-talented dj x tech dj good morning good afternoon good evening thanks for joining us today good evening to you sir thank you for having me on well, it's great to have you on board too congratulations to tampa bay lightning by the way they did an amazing job back to back Absolutely. Yes, sir. We're waiting. We're, hopefully, hopefully they'll pull a hat trick out of it. So <laughs> waiting, waiting to see how that uh, waiting to see how this season coming up goes. Don't tell that to the Penguin fans. It's like they're probably sabotaging. Yeah. It. It's like, don't get that word out. <laughs> they, they could be. They could be. <laughs> well, you never know. It's social media these days. It's like anything can happen. So you're the founder of Pulse Media LLC. You're also the parent company of uh, Tampa Bay Pulse media and also pulse radio you've been featured in a uh, quite a number of um you know publications indie pulse music indie music business and also pulse media magazine and uh you've had years experience of creating radio programs shows and um stations etc and uh you also have an, a, a story about how you founded um the the these stations as well too and uh, you have an mission and before getting to all that uh dj x tech or we'll call you tom tell us how i first got started um, okay, well, how I first got started. Okay, well, boy. Um, you know, I think, I think that, uh, the, should we go back to, should we go back to the, um, the early years or, or absolutely early years? If you all go on a way back machine like Sherman, feel free to do so. 
Okay. Uh, well, background in music is basically, um, I'm not really, I'm not really, you know, trained or, or pretty much self-taught. Um, it came from, you know, a musical family, musical background, and uh, I released a CD back in the early 2000s, uh, which got signed to a record label. And I did lose my rights, you know, to my music for a long time. And what really, what really kind of ticked me off about that was um, a couple of months after I found out that this was basically kind of like a bogus deal, it was taking everything away from me. Um, I'm sitting with a friend and we're watching, you know, a, a TV show and it was a reality cooking show. And during the elimination around one of my songs comes on. Oh no. Yeah. And I was just like, oh man, oh, that, you know, and the bad thing about it was obviously I would have lost out on some money uh, from that. And I think that, you know, back then probably paid a little bit more than it would today as well. But uh, the, the biggest kicker to it was that I didn't even get recognition for it, you know, oh. so, my, so my song was playing and it didn't even, you know, show up in any kind of credits or anything like that, because that's just how bad the record deal was. Um, so, you know, so we're going to fast forward a couple of years until uh, let's let's just say uh, 2021, um, you know, uh, I started working on another album earlier in 2020, actually, I should say, and um, I was finishing up and um I own a, I had a construction company started as I was doing this because obviously this was just my day job. Um, mm -hmm. What would happen is I would come home and I had, I would be in such physical pain in my arms. It was just absolutely just ridiculous. Uh, I was, it got to a point where by November of 2020, I was sleeping about an hour a night. Wow. And then I was, and then I would literally just go and I would, I would go back to the construction once again, just because I own the company. So I have to be there. I have to meet with clients. I have to get stuff done. And, uh, you know, eventually went to the doctor just to see what was going on. Got a couple of cortisone shots in my arms, which, which kind of seemed to help for a little while, but there was a deeper underlying issue. Uh, when they took my neck x-ray, uh, they had cause for concern. So they sent me out to get an MRI. And uh, when the results came back from the MRI and I met up with a doctor, he basically told me right there is like, well, you know, you need to quit construction. You're done. You're done. What was happening is um, I completely blew out a disc in my neck and um, and the pressure that that the uh, two vertebrae were just basically crushing all the all the nerves and oh, wow. and the herniation from whatever was left over on the disc was actually putting direct pressure on my spinal cord. So they had to, uh, they had to go in through the front of the neck. I don't know if you can see the scar there, or not, but they had to go in through the front of the neck. They had to move everything aside, all the muscles, mm -hmm. you know, my throat, everything. Then they got to get to the back of the, uh, you know, to the spinal column, right? Uh, they put, had to put an implant in there and, wow. uh, you know, screw it in with a plate just so that way it stays uh, intact. Then they put everything back together. Uh, hence, which is why the title of my CD was actually called implant because once I saw the, uh, once I saw the x-ray from, you know, from the, uh, from, from the surgery, I was like, okay, that needs to be the album cover in this case. Oh my God. And, um, yeah. So, you know, it, it was, it was, it was a matter of what was I going to do after this, when I got that news that I could not go back to construction because, you know, my, my initial recovery period is supposed to be three to six months with a full recovery between 12 to 18 months. Wow. Yeah. 12 to 18. And, uh, and, and how did, how did this, uh, injury, uh, or how did this injury first happen? Oh, it's just deterioration over time. Oh my goodness. So yeah, with it, all it the just... heavy lifting, moving and um yes, sir. All, you know, twist, turns and get underneath, reach, exactly. everything like that. Wow. Exactly. Um, I didn't even realize that that when the doctor had mentioned that I didn't even realize that I was as close to paralysis as I as I was because he told me you need to stop right now. You cannot go back to work tomorrow when, when we met in the doctor's office. So it was just kind of like one of those things. And um and obviously this, this jump started, you know, um you know, the survival mechanism in the brain, you know, it's like, what am I going to do now? I just, just I'm like the, the, the construction company is, you know, gaining steam. Um, everything's going really well. I'm out there, you know, working every day, meeting with new clients, meeting with new people and everything. And now I'm told that I have to stop. So it's just like, what do I do? And my first initial thought was, was, you know, I'll probably, let me try to do something with music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it started off as kind of like a, um, just a self-preservation method, honestly, because I was like looking at it like, okay, well, let me do something with my music and I'll get it out there, you know, get it out there on Spotify and do this, do that, you know, I'll finagle it somehow, advertise it, see if I could get, you know, um, some type of replacement income. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not, not exactly what I was making, but enough to, enough to still, you know, support myself and, you know, be comfortable. 
Um, but as I was contacting people and, um, and sending my pitch out to different magazines and I was, you know, on different, uh, forums on musicians forums on Facebook and, you know, Reddit, um, so on and so forth. I started listening to some really amazing music. Some really amazing music from different artists. And it, th- there's a lot of talented people out there, you know? And, um, and so I started contacting them and I was just like trying to bounce ideas like, Hey, what are you doing to promote yourself? And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And uh, got into some really good conversations with a few people. And then what I started to think about was, I was just like, okay, well, you know what? Well, why don't I do this? I'm just going to, instead of trying to promote myself, I'm going to start up a podcast where it'll be something where I feature underground musicians and that way we can have some kind of cross promotion going. Mm, Um, The, the response to that was pretty overwhelming. Um, I, I had gotten, you know, I was getting probably about just from contacting people, just, just uh, kind of like a door to door salesman, you know, but email wise, I was, uh, you know, posting on Facebook, like, you know, and, uh, and just getting the word out there. I was getting anywhere between like, you know, five and 20 submissions per day of people that were like really interested. Like, here's my song. I like your idea for your podcast and, you know, and I want to take part in it. So I was like, oh, okay, well, this is cool. And then the opportunity presented itself to actually start up a radio station. Mm. So when, go ahead. That that's interesting too. You talked about uh, having the radio station came up. Now this is from all over the world. Were were there any from the uh, Tampa area that also sent you some music? Yes, actually, uh, the, where I had my uh, where I had my apartment before I moved in with my uh, with my now wife, uh, Pinellas Park. Uh, I had a gentleman there that uh, that had made made a music submission. So music submissions have been coming in from everywhere, and it's been really really interesting to uh, just to chat with everybody. Um, I mean submissions coming in from romania the united wow. kingdom a huge supporter the united kingdom there's a lot of good music coming out of there from every genre whether you're talking about you know rock metal hip-hop a lot of good stuff coming out of there but i mean we're going australia um kazakhstan um you know spain um Ooh. canada all over canada all over the united states obviously um, but I mean, from Germany, from Sweden, from like, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, uh, you know, on, on, on the website, the, the pulsemediamag.com website, I have, I have the impact map for the show there where it's actually listened to. And, you know, uh, since everything's gone live, uh, May 10th was, was the first, the initial launch date of everything. Since everything went live, we've had an average of 452 listeners per day. Oh my goodness. Wow. Using, using up almost two gigabytes because people don't stay on for like, you know, two, three minutes at a time. The average uh, listener duration is an hour. And I think 21 minutes is what it was. So we're usually, we're literally burning up about two gigs of, um, of bandwidth per day mm-hmm. for, for all these people, which is great because, you know, it gets the point across that I was trying to make is that, you know, there are phenomenal out- artists out there you know, there are people that, 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 you know, that are, you know, like in their basement, like, you know, work in their grind and mm-hmm. their music sounds absolutely wonderful. And the fact that people are actually logging on for as long as they do, and they listen for as long as they do, I think is, is a testament to that, that they, that there is great music out there. You don't need to be signed to a record label. Mm-hmm. And of course that's been a big trend as well too, that you don't have to be, you know, the thing about the big label is pretty much gone by the way of the dinosaurs, like people sign the Spotify, iHeart, mm-hmm iTunes, Google Play, Apple, even on YouTube as well. And the big uh, thing I noticed on YouTube is that uh, people are parting out um, shorter songs. Used to be like your standard three-minute song, and now it's down to about like a minute or 30 seconds or even like a minute and a half the most. I mean, it's just like – it's almost like breaking new ground here. It really is, you know, and and, and I – oh, boy, I have a lot to say on that, but <laughs> – <laughs> We're, we're, we'll probably not have enough time for everything, but you know, um, listen, the, the, the record labels, the radio stations that are out there now, they've completely let everybody down. They completely have. And it's, and it's a damn shame once again, because there's so many talented musicians out there that there doesn't need to be this kind of like separation, right? Where people are doing it on their own, but you know, um, here's the thing is I remember back when I released um, The World Through My Eyes, which was my first debut CD after I had the radio contract, which I released through CD Baby. Mm -hmm. 
um, that one actually did really well as far as sales can, sales was, were concerned. And when, and this was about the same time that I think YouTube was just starting. Uh, I think what was it like streaming. early nineties or mid nineties or something. No, this was, this was about 2000. This one I released, I think it was 2005. 2005. Okay. I was trying right. about when YouTube started. Cause we talked earlier on, um, you know, oh. off the air about MySpace being big before Facebook came in and right, other right. things like 2007. I remember that. And then everything just took off from there. Well, I think, I think, I think YouTube started paying for streaming somewhere around just before the time that, um, that I released that CD. I really don't know. Cause I, you know, I, I don't have the actual, you know, statistic right in front of me, you know, the timeline of when they did, but, but they did end up paying for streaming at a certain point. And I remember at this time when I had released the CD, when I was actually getting royalty checks in for it, they were paying for three cents per stream, which I mean, anywhere between three to five cents per stream, I should say, which, um, you know, doesn't sound like a whole lot, but now Spotify, for example, pays 0. 0.0035. I I, I remember I remember reading about that and there's been a big protest against Spotify about that. And there's been a lot of um, legislation and, um, you know, controversy and everything. And uh, when I read that, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Wow. Well, I mean, it's because you're really you're making it difficult because, you know, the major CD, the major CD labels, um, I should say record labels, CD labels just came out that way. I know nobody listens to CDs anymore, right? But the, the major, <laughs> I still got major, my vinyl collection if that counts. So, <laughs> well, hey, hey, that does count. You know, it, 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 it's going to be a good thing to hang on to. Uh, definitely the old media. I still have my CD collection here. I, I, I like holding something physical, you know, because, because, you know, back in the day, we used to have to wait for stuff to come out. You know, we, we, we had to read magazines and keep up with bands that we liked and, uh, you know, and, and try to figure out like, who was coming out with a with a new thing when when the album was going to be out in stores wait in line for that album and so forth and i that remember they had yeah. album signings and then they had like release parties at the record store i remember those days i remember it's yeah. like you know people just wait in lines to get the new album it's like oh my gosh amazing. Well, and, and, and i mean that was a really fun time i think and I, I think that that's how name recognition was was built for bands back then is because they had a lot of people waiting for for everything right uh we're we're in such an on-demand um you know universe now that it's just you know with 40 i think it's forty thousand new songs are released per month wow you know from from various different bands and so um i gotta tell you uh as, for as much as i hear the mainstream stuff going in the car i really i really don't know the names of too many bands nowadays and i think that that's going to be a common problem for for a lot of people uh you know my daughter 12 is 12 years old i don't really know that she actually knows or follows any of the music that she actually listens to other than when it's on TikTok or YouTube or, you know, whatever social media she's using, uh, you know, at her age and what her friends like. I don't think that they, that, that there's, that there's in the, in their generation, there's not that much of the anticipation of waiting for, you know, like Metallica to come out with a brand new album or waiting mm -hmm. for, you know, Dr. Dre to release something or Snoop Dogg, you know, back when we had it like that. So with it being as on demand as it is, I think the I think the actual statistic of it now is that you have to catch and hold someone's attention within the first 10 seconds or otherwise you're just gone. I, I, I read something about that, too. And that's why I said something about YouTube as well, too, where back in the day you had your standard uh, single about three minutes. Now it's down to about like, um, you know, I, I know artists out there that just put out songs that are like 30 seconds long, a minute, a minute, 30. And you're right. It's just like the attention span is getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And we grew up. It's like, yeah, about maybe about a minute to hold our attention in the early days. It was like five, 10, whatever it is. And you're mm -hmm. right. It's like, you know, attention span. If you want to hook them to like, five to 10 seconds like yeah you're right it's done i mean unbelievable it it really is and it's just you know and i understand you know time is moving time is moving time is moving forward we can't do anything about that you know we have to adjust you know to the times but how do you do that as a musician how, how do you how do you actually uh create enough content how do you keep your personal life separate from your professional life um, while trying to promote yourself when, you know, a record, a, a record label obviously is, uh, you know, they're equipped to, you know, invest $250,000, for example, let's say into, you know, pushing a single for their artist. And when they get the plays on Spotify, you know, when they get, you know, like, let's say 750 million or 220 million or whatever it is, then their artist actually makes some kind of money from it. But I mean, how do you expect to do that as an independent artist? And I'm a very firm believer that, you know, that you should do 
you should be able to do for a living what you love rather than having to do something just to survive. And right. this is, this is, this is how the, the entire process came about to be is like, I really want to be able to push these artists and push this music out there. So that way everybody can hear it. So that way, maybe somehow, some way we're able to create this community where your music can be heard by everybody and enjoyed. And so that way, maybe, you know, you're not going to become a millionaire, but Hey, you know, if you can make 500 bucks a week off of it and do something that you love rather than, you know, going into uh you know your regular day job then i think everybody deserves that opportunity you know you speak like the geico lizard as well too and the geico lizard <laughs> says if you love what you do it's not a job and i think you guys are liking just like myself <laughs> exactly <laughs> and, uh, and we'll talk more about uh some of the music as well too and more about <laughs> um tampa bay pulse radio and more in just a minute but first listen to the mike widener show at the mike widener show.com powered by sonic web studios Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author, Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and evil of it endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Me and Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show is brought to you by a picture of this photo box we're remembering is the key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at a wedding and even more so at yours. And who doesn't miss grandmother's meatballs, right? Well, holidays are coming and what better time to give a gift for remembrance that makes you laugh, cry at the same time. Whoever get the grandma's recipes or just because those smiles and tears will melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 10% off your first order. Picture this photo books. Bring your memories back to life. They're whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. And don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, Amazon Music, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise at the themikewidenershow.com. T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, throw pillows, tote bags, and more. Also check on Amazon at the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to amazon.com and check out the Me and Molson Zia store for T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, and also great books like Missing, Once, Wrinkles, and More makes great great gifts year round and don't forget to uh donate to the mike widener show at the mike widener show.com also on anchor fm slash support and paypal and make sure you do so today we're here with a terrific gentleman who's out of the tampa bay area and uh founder of pulse media llc and the parent company at tampa bay pulse radio dj x tech here on the mike widener show and before we uh talk further about uh your radio station your media company and your ventures and more and uh, who are some of your favorite artists singers and uh, musicians growing up Oh man, I I really have a lot to name. Um, it's it's it, when I do written interviews with uh, with my guests, uh, that's that's one of the things that I say is is um, personally, I think that the '90s uh, were one of the greatest generations for original music, and mm -hmm. so that's one of the questions is which generation do you think you know was the best? And a lot of people say '60s, '70s, which I completely understand, but I think that the '90s had a um, had a different impact. How so? Um, because, well, because, at least for me, it was like this. You know, if you looked at my CD collection when I was a teenager growing up, um, you would see Dr. Dre there. You would see Weezer. You would see, um, you know, um, Enigma, uh, Vanilla Ice, going to Metallica, to MC Hammer, to Guns N' Roses, to, you know, Rage Against the Machine, um, Faith No More. You know, it was just... <laughs> It was very eclectic, uh, just because all this all this great music was coming at you, and and you know maybe in my mind it's a little bit of nostalgia of why I think '90s is great, but 
this is one of the times once again when music was being brought back that was really popular in the 60s and 70s you know the beatles the doors pink floyd um there was a lot of music that was that that was in the 90s that was coming back from that era of music as well which i think i think that that's what really diversified uh, my musical palette you know so to speak is just because there was all this great music available which is why i truly believe that the 90s were probably one of the one of the greatest eras for music that there was so yeah so as far as as far as artists that i liked uh uh anybody that knows me all, all the friends that i've had from way back when knows that my favorite band was metallica 100 um the, the, they're they're the band that actually turned me on to you know to heavy metal uh i remember uh, i was with my mom at one of her friends parties and um you know older people i wasn't really going to be hanging out with them so uh <laughs> the, the host of the party was here you go you know i got a boom box and i got some cds if you want to listen to some music and i was just like you know at the time, I think I was really heavy into uh, Vanilla Ice had just put out Ice Ice Baby and MC Hammer had, you know, oh, don't touch yeah. this, you know, so this was probably giving away my age a little bit here. But uh, <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm holding the Metallica Black album and I've, and I've never really uh, heard heavy metal before. And I put that in and I think I, I listened to it, uh, listened to the entire album twice that night. And uh, that was the group that really turned me on into uh, to heavy metal. And from there. Um, you know, I started going out to whenever I would go out to a, you know, a supermarket or anything, they had a magazine stand back then, obviously everywhere, practically, right. Pick up a heavy metal magazine, see, you know, who's hot, who's not and everything. And then I would just uh, start building up my CD collection. And, um, you know, as we did back in the day, uh, borrow a friend, borrow a CD from a friend, I should say, and, uh, you know, um, convert it to, you know, record it off of the tape deck. And then you would have that tape to listen to, right. Piracy, yes. CDs and, uh, putting them in tape decks and listening yeah. to the car and all that boom box. I remember those days very well, even like with records, you could also have those three and ones. You can just, uh, you know, borrow from a library, borrow from a friend, play it, put it on tape and, uh, boom, there you go. Absolutely. You know, I, I totally forgot about that, that, that libraries used to, you, yeah, they used to give out the VHS tapes and the, um, and the tapes of vinyls, newspapers, everything, boy. And now they're shutting down libraries too. So uh, go figure. Everything's, <laughs> everything's online though. Right. So we'll be all right. And, and of course, yeah, I think about libraries too. It's just like, you know, of course you have the uh, catalog, which is their version of Google and, um, you know, you know, whatever else, not everything's online, you're right. But, you know, it feels like I'm going back in a trip of time and whatever else. And um, you also, uh, you know, start up uh, Pulse Media as well, too. And you've had some uh, amazing interviews. And uh, where are some of the, uh, you know, you know, some of the more prominent uh, interviews that you have and maybe where, where are some of the ones that stood out for you? Oh, boy. Well, you know, um, IndiePulseMusic.com, uh, they did a really nice piece on me. Um, which, which is fantastic. Uh, I actually became really good friends with the, uh, with the gentleman that owns that publication. His name is Joseph Timmons. Mm -hmm. um, they, it's actually a very interesting story because I'm now a contributing writer for IndiePulseMusic.com as well, uh, just because we got along so great. Uh, but the piece that they did on me was really nice. Um, I had one that was done on, uh, on Jamsphere magazine. Um, oh boy. I don't know, you know, there, it just, it kind of like seems like, like, like there, there's a lot, I have to give shout outs to a lot of people just because uh, it's been, it's been, it's really been great. The, the people that I've met through this journey, um, just, you know, fantastic people trying to help out in the music industry, you know, um, so can I do that right now? Can I just get a few shout outs out? Absolutely. I mean, the, okay, floor, so, the floor is all yours. It's not yeah. about me. It's about you. That's okay, the thing. Well, it's you, you, you. So go right ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll just uh, name a few people off here. So I definitely want to give a big shout out to uh, to some really good friends of the show um, from uh, Great Britain. Uh, one gentleman, his name is Slow Walk. If uh, if you have some free time on your hands, go check out his uh, his show that he has got going on his music videos on um, on YouTube. Um, Wrath of Amari, very good friends to the show from the very beginning. They helped with a lot of beta testing and everything like that. Obviously, uh, I want to say uh, Joseph Timmons, uh, the owner of Indie Pulse Music Magazine. want to give a big shout out to uh, Troy and uh, Elliot. Uh, they're from BlastMusic247.com. They have a nice uh, multimedia platform going on where artists can, um, you know, uh, build up their stage, get paid for live performances. Um, you know, build their fan base, a really great site. I think every musician should actually check that out. Blastmusic 247com Um, you know, um, obviously, you know, my wife, my daughter, my mom, my stepdad, you know, the, the family, we'll just get the shout outs out of the way. So that way everybody knows that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your support <laughs> to everybody, you know, so 
Mm -hmm. And I'm going. And, 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 and I want to thank you, Mike, for this for this uh, interview as well. This is this is absolutely fantastic to be on your show. No problem. And thank you as well too. Of course, you know, being hockey fans and whatever else, and uh, baseball fans, and of course, you know, football fans will um you know talk sports one day as well too. And uh, going through your um your website, PulseRadioTampaBay.com, you've uh, got some amazing people. You had uh, Finn Matthews and uh, Samantha Grimes, and um, also you had some interviews on there too, Larry J and uh, Zach Landry, who I had on the show. And I mean, you just had some amazing people on there. Yeah. Um, well, this is, this is the criteria for, you know, for actually getting your, your music uh, on with us and, and magazine interviews and so forth is, is uh, you know, as long as you're an independent musician, you are more than welcome to submit. And obviously I will do everything that I can to gain you the most exposure possible. Uh, just so everyone knows the only restriction that there is to that the only, only, only restriction that there is to that is that there, your song cannot contain any direct hate. Oh absolutely... yeah, that's that's the most important thing. I'm hearing too much of that on the uh, even um, popular terrestrial radio stations using the F word and um, N words and everything. It's almost like you know when's this gonna stop? You know, it's it's something you're doing something about it too, which is amazing. Well, you know, uh, once again, every culture has their own appropriations uh, appropriations for their vocabulary, and I completely understand that. I do support the freedom of speech. Um, however, if it is absolutely 100, if you know that 100% you made a song that is absolutely hateful or towards any gender or, or, or race, it's absolutely 100% unacceptable in the world. And it is definitely 100% unacceptable, you know, for uh, Tampa Bay's Pulse Radio, Pulse Media, Pulse Media LLC in general. There's, there's no room for it, man. Um, <clears throat> you know, the way that 2020 has, has gone with, uh, with, with politics and I hate to get into it, but, you know, but, um, there's there's absolutely no place for hate in our world at all and we are not going to support music like that one bit mm -hmm. and i think that's very uh important as well too something to keep in mind and um how can people reach you and uh how can how can artists uh submit to you and uh how can they uh reach you oh um my personal email is djxtech at djxtechrecords.com uh you can contact me there feel free um, also, if you go on to Pulse, uh, Pulse Radio Tampa Bay .com, there is a music submission link or a contact form, uh, Pulse Media Mag .com, um, There's a contact form there as well. Probably the easiest ways to go about that. That sounds very good. And what's coming up for DJ X Tech uh, and uh, Tampa Bay Media? More. We'll find out in just a minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at the Mike Widener Show .com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, international warring author, me and Bolson Zia Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Also brought to you by uh, Picture List Full Books, where remembrance is a key ingredient. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. We'll be back with DJ X Tech after this timeout. We're back with the amazing DJ X Tech, the founder of Pulse Media LLC and also Tampa Bay Pulse Radio here on the Mike Widener Show. And what can we expect from you in 2021 and beyond? Well, uh, we're tossing around a lot of different ideas. Um, a gentleman that I work with, uh, his name is Carlos Fandango. Forgot him in the shout outs, but I'll, I'll let him know. <laughs> uh, we, we actually started doing a, um, a, a bit of a, a live music review show um, that we've been airing on uh, on Facebook Live, on uh, YouTube, just pr pretty much whatever, whatever uh, you know, uh, multimedia you would you would think of is, is where we've been trying to uh, to get that done. Um, we we've been having some some technical issues the, he's in he's in england and i'm here so i really don't know if it's if it's a matter of our, our of our internet connections uh, but we've been having audio problems some video problems we've been trying to get that sorted out but that's one show that we're that we're looking to continue is basically we hop onto random profiles and random find random music on the internet play it and then just kind of like give it like a little quick little review then obviously we let we let the artists know that we that we did that so uh so they can check us out so that's what that's one thing that we had going on and uh with that idea i think that the next logical step is is since we already have a print publication that's that's been started by any pulse music um we're thinking about moving over towards a uh, roku tv channel at the moment oh yeah i so, heard a lot of people getting on roku and um don't forget twitch as well too and some of the other um, yes. video streaming platforms you know roku's popular and twitch i mean that's really got, gained a lot of momentum it really has uh, i was i was very surprised by that because uh, twitch initially i think started out just as as a gaming platform 
um, where people would stream video games that they were playing. But uh, I've seen I've seen great music shows on there. I've seen uh, fantastic musicians on there. Obviously, you know, um, uh, once again, of all genres, uh, just singer songwriters playing their pianos or guys just playing their guitars. I've seen a couple of bands just doing, you know, like basically 24 seven, just doing live streams of them performing, which is a uh, which is great. I think I think it's I think it's awesome that there that there are so many mediums there for for the musicians to get their music out. So hopefully and, we can contribute a little bit to that. And they're doing this uh, while the while, while the uh, the kids are playing video games. That's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And of course, my boys do that too. They're gamers, and uh, they gotta have music in the background. Otherwise, they go nuts. So I, oh, yeah. I speak I speak for the gamers out there because my boys are big time gamers. I'll tell you that. I mean, me it's just like. I'm kind of like an, an 80s gamer, you know, Pac-Man, Defender, and right. whatever else. But it's like, it's going to take me a while to get into the brand new games. Like, I got to figure out the controls or I don't want to mess up and piss anybody off. So, You know, I've generally I've generally been pretty good at picking picking it up. But um, I remember, geez, when the I think it was the PlayStation 3 that came out and they had um, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six that came out for that. I remember that there were, it was, it was something ridiculous. Like, I think there were like 14,000 different possible combinations of buttons that you can hit and i was just like no there's just absolutely no way that i'm picking this out <laughs> it's crazy like how fourteen thousand? how do you expect me to memorize this sometimes i can't even remember that if eight is a number or not you know so yeah or it's like you know start stop player one player two up down left right shoot fire block and all that that yeah. that i think that's probably my um my limit right there and it's like you think defender's tough it's like i mean Boy, look at all the games. I mean, I was able to figure out NFL Blitz, but after a while, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like, how, how do I do this again without uh, screwing up? <laughs> right. And it's even getting more, more and more complicated. Now, um, you know, I thought I thought actually virtual reality, I thought was going to be bigger than than what it actually turned out to be. It kind of like seemed like there was a little bit of hype for it for a little bit, and then it just kind of like fizzled off into the uh, into the background. Kind of disappointed in that though, because I thought virtual reality was definitely going to be you know the wave of the future for video games. But, you know, but with everything that's going on, it, not much time to play video games these days anyway. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of liking the direction that we're heading. I like sticking to the music, but I'm definitely the same way. I, I need some kind of music going on in the background. I can't mm -hmm. sit there and, you know, type out an email and not listen to ever, anything. You know, just have dead silence. It's, uh, mm -hmm. And yeah. in terms of technology, what's the next uh, what's the next wave of the future that you see? As far as technology? Or is this like, you know, with music or shows or anything like that? It's like, what's the next uh, big thing that you see in the future? Boy, I really don't know. You know, that's a great question. Um, hopefully it gets back to, like, let's say a little bit of sense of normality. At least what would be normal for, you know, for us. Um, but with everybody just kind of like doing, um, you know, the live streaming Live streaming, I think, is going to become really big. And, you know, if they could some, maybe that's an idea since I thought maybe virtual reality would take off. Maybe that's a good, maybe that's an idea for it, right? Is get, get virtual reality going where you can live stream, um, you know, uh, your band or your set or, you know, uh, get it going to uh, virtual reality. Maybe that's an idea for it. But I haven't really, you know, I haven't really thought about it because um, COVID obviously threw a monkey wrench into everything. You know, we went from playing live shows to not not having anything at all so i think i think that it, you know in 2021 if we just uh you know reverted back to even having live shows on a constant then that would be a, a feat in itself but for the as far as you know beyond that i really i really don't know I haven't given it much thought i'll have to i'll have to think about that some more for sure and of course we'll have you on next time as well too and uh talk more about that and who do you consider biggest influence in your career <sighs> musically or just in general in general Hmm. I haven't thought about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would, I would have to go back to people, you know, um, let's just go back to, you know, uh, Steve jobs, for example, you know, um, the self starters out there, you know, I mean, um, they're, they're huge influences, you know, uh, all, all these, there's a lot of great entrepreneurs out there, you know, Bill Gates, Steve jobs, you know, you're talking about guys that started in their garage, uh, I don't know who the founders of Nike are, but, you know, even like listening to their story, you know, they started off in a van with a waffle iron and, you know, made, made Nike an enterprise, you know, the self-starters out there, you know, if you, if you look at their story, then that's kind of like motivation, but, um, you know, biggest motivational factors I would have to say is definitely family and friends.
Mm-hmm. And of course, I saw something on Facebook as well, too, that all the big companies actually did get started in a garage. I mean, isn't that something? Then you buy office space, it was all in a garage. That was amazing. Right. It, it, it truly is. And I think that's, that's you know, and you're, and you're talking about a lot of people that just, uh, they were going to college, they they figured out that, you know, the regular nine to five grind was not going to be for them. They decided to take a chance and, you know, move back into their parents, a lot of, you know, once again, into their garage, started working out of that, just really, just really pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and, you know, made it big. And, thanks to them for doing so, I guess. Right. So we have iPhones now. <laughs> yes, it is. And it's truly amazing. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Don't give up. Don't give up. You know, um, that's, that's just the thing is you may feel overwhelmed at times. You may feel um, like it's going nowhere. If you truly love what you're doing, believe me sooner or later, it will pay off. So just don't give up. Keep pushing that grind. Keep pushing for what you believe in. It certainly will do so. Once again, DJ X Tech of uh, Tampa Bay Pulse uh, Radio as well, too, and Pulse Media here on the Mike Wagner Show. Very big. Thank you for your time, DJ X. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back in 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. You've been terrific. And once again, what you, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, and where can people simply um, check you out? And uh, for all the musicians out there, it's like, how, how can they uh, submit to you? Absolutely. Well, um, DGX Tech, uh, there will be a new single out soon. Um, as far as musicians contacting me, once again, head on to pulsemediamag.com, pulseradiotampabay.com, um, or just contact me through my email uh, at DJX Tech at DJX Tech Records.com. And uh, we'll chat and we will look for the best way to get you promotion and exposure that you deserve. So. That sounds very good. Once again, DJ X Tech, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back in 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. You've been absolutely terrific. And we wish you all the very best. And uh, go Tampa Bay Lightning next year. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike, for having me on once again. And uh, yeah, I'd definitely be looking forward to a follow-up with you, hopefully with, with more good news on, on, on fantastic musicians out there. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I know that you Love the show and uh, love, you know, been listening to your stuff for, you know, and just thank you. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very excited and humbled to have been on the show. Thank you very much.